to a new edition of Chi Time, where your energy matters with me, Clara Apollo, here on podcast or on video or wherever you're picking this up. You're very welcome in. And I have such a wonderful show for you here on this episode. I've got a gathering of the, some eminent Qigong teachers, players, inspirers that are part of this um, world, 22nd World Congress of Qigong Tai Chi, Traditional Chinese Medicine and Natural Health. And it's a real honor to have you all here with me today. So we're going to speak a little bit about how people have got involved in the this Congress and, and, and what it is that it's going to be here for you. And we're just going to keep it quite succinct as well. Let's see how we go, because I tell you who I'm going to introduce you to first. Oh, my goodness. This is such a big honor. This is um, let me introduce you to the Congress visionary. Right. This is Dame Dr. Effie Chow. She's in the house. She's the Qigong Grandmaster and she's the founder of the East West Academy of Healing Arts and she's the World Congress founder. That was 1990, hence why this is the 22nd Congress. She's often she's revered as the grandmother of Qigong and Dr. Chow has pioneered in bringing complementary care to the West. So let's invite you in first, um, Dr. Chow, to talk about the inspiration behind this World Congress, you know, why did you decide to do it back in 1990? What is it all about? Thank you very much. And I thank Clara, you for being such a visionary as well, having such a program and for inviting me and my other friends that you'll be meeting after. And so my dear heart and love to all of you and to all in the world, because we are connected. We are connected. We are all energy bodies. Not that we have energy, but we are energy. And the, and the thing is, 1990, it didn't decide, oh, we're going to have the World Congress. It's evolved since my birth and maybe in utero, because I come from a very cultural family, Chinese family. And I'm a World War II refugee coming to Canada uh, to a family that is steeped in Chinese culture. So you asked me, how did this conference come about? It evolved right from there. My father, my mother, everything, and it evolved. So I witnessed at that, at that young age, people who were dying from Western medicine care that they were couldn't do anything. And my father got the permission, can we do our medicine? Which of course, Chinese medicine and, and Qigong, et cetera. And they, they would give them the hopeless cases. And one particular case, Dr. Wong lived another 15 years. And I was into my nursing at that time because I wanted to do healing because of Chinese medicine, et cetera. Little did I realize that there was such a, a, a disparity and, and superstition. We were blamed for practicing superstition. So what I realized in nursing is that the revolving door concept is that people revolved out before they're well, because they couldn't heal them. Then they revolved back in and they, each time it was happening and they die too early, much too early. And so I got thinking, oh my God, what about my background? And so I got permission to use Qigong. And when I became an acupuncturist, I got permission to use acupuncture along with my clients. And they would refer people to me. And so we got results where all else had failed. And so the involvement, when you do something yourself, is not strong. You know, you can be as strong as you can be. And I know I've got some very strong characters here on board with me right here, very powerful. And so, but you cannot do everything yourself. So evolve the concept that we must band together to gain power, to gain strength and power in a good way, not a destructive way. And so we did, I've started the 1973, 
the East West Academy of Healing Arts, a nonprofit, 501c3 uh, nonprofit. And it was dedicated to my father, who helped so many people come from China in those days, in 1930s, 40s, 50s. It was like, oh my God, he was battling society, always an activist. And so I guess I inherited all that from him, my, my dedication to society. And so, as I said, East West Academy of Healing Arts is dedicated and formulated for my dear father, Wa Sing Chow. And I want to throw out two concepts that I learned very well, we have many philosophies. He said, whatever you do, do your best. Even if you're a toilet cleaner, do it the best. And then he said, live as if to die tomorrow, but plan as if to live forever. Not the real other way around, which today it seems is the other way around. They live hard and they don't have far, far plans, you know, further plans. And they live for today, but it's live today as if to die tomorrow and plan as if to live forever. So that's evolved in 1990 from my experiences, many experiences worldwide, et cetera. I've been to many hospitals, 20 hospitals, in fact, they called me in, dealing with death and dying, dealing with birth, dealing with conditions that they couldn't deal with, like COPD and strokes, uh, paralysis. We would get them walking in one and two sessions and Parkinson, that they're all debilitated, that they're all put in. And in one and two senses, including Chao Qigong, and it, what I developed as a Chao Integrated Healing System, C-I-H-S slash Chao, Chao Medical Qigong, C-M-Q. And that's what I went around the world doing. It was so elevated. And I myself, in 2015, had three near-death experiences from Western medicine. And I had to realize that I've got to use both, you know, mother and father, yes. Chinese medicine and alternative and uh, yes. Western medicine. That's how you know, the concept of the Congress evolved. And we've every year for 20 something years involved the top 10% of the people and experts in the whole world and perhaps a universe, if we know anybody in the universe. And we are getting there, you know, with exploration of, of uh, beyond the planet. And it was so exciting. People that could also do what I do, but we didn't dare talk about it because they think, oh, you're boasting. When we say we could get them walking in one session, paralyzed from five years from stroke, et cetera. And, and then, uh, so everybody, and I know others have, have uh, great experiences, like the people with me on this panel, mm -hmm. but we don't dare say it. So in my delivery now, I tell everybody, write it down, whatever happened, mm -hmm. and make it a document of your truth. Yes. Because if you just say, well, I helped them walk, the nor normal thought is that, oh, it took you a year or two years or so forth. If you say in one and two sessions, they say, oh, come on. But if we have enough reports like that, everybody brave enough and support each other, we can influence the system, and which we have very much in the 20 years of the World Congress and the 1973 East West Academy of Healing Arts. Wonderful, wonderful, Dr. Chow. Thank you so much. I would love to invite you back into Chi Time for a much longer discussion because you have such a wealth of information coming through you and, and what a story of your life as well. So this 22nd just Congress. One just one more comment, sorry. Okay. Is that it's not just practicing, but it's influencing policy and legislation oh, to make God. the difference. It's not just us doing things and enjoy what a wonderful conference, but we come and we were involved with the White House Commission on Complementary Alternative Medicine 
they'll uh, Clinton, and we help the whole system of medicine involve what we call integrated health and yes. energy medicine and whatever they call it. And from that one meeting, and we've been in many policy meetings, that's what's important for everybody to think policy influences the system, not just yourself. Exactly. And so that band is, together. That is such such a good point with with the with the Congress and and with that all the sharing and all this like owning what how Qigong has helped and shifted your own medical and emotional and challenges. We're saying okay, that's great. The anecdotal evidence is so strong, but absolutely getting into policy and this integration of East and West. This is where we're going, isn't it? That's where we're going forward. So, let science research and scientific research combining the art yes. and science. It's such a beauty. Thank it's you, such Lee. a beauty. Oh, thank you, thank you. Let's let's open up then, uh, Dr. Shai. Let's uh, reveal who else is here with us because we have Dr. Mary Jo Bulbrook, who is a master teacher practitioner in innovative programs worldwide. I know she's on the board and she's helping to prepare everything behind the scenes for this Congress, as indeed are Sharon Rose, the president of the Sacred Mysteries production and Reverend Dr. Amelia Weiching, the founder of Infinity Quantum Qigong. So let's just all get us all on, on the screen now together and have a little bit of a wave. Hello, everybody. Welcome in, welcome in. Big hugs, big heart hugs from us all. Oh, I've really learned that from you. <laughs> heart hugs are, are key but you were talking about the um the powerful people behind this congress enabling it to happen um so shall we go and ask uh mary jo bulbrook what her integration has been with all of this um if because you're a, found, a founder and director of the energy medicine partnerships and akamai university's dean of continuing education and dean of institute of cam studies online educational programs. Um, Dr. Burber, welcome in. Can I call you Mary Jo? Thank you. Please do. Uh, it is an honor to be here. And I'm very excited to talk about the work and the visionary yes. effort from Effie that we are all building on. I met Effie in 1970. So that's when this was being born. And through my work in studying energy therapies, which is the language that was that I was pulled into the network with, and it evolved, just described her evolution in the work that occurred with me as well. Like Effie, I am a nurse as well, and we are both uh, psychiatric mental health nurses and have worked with families uh, throughout our career. And I have taught both nursing and energy therapies in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Peru, and uh, uh, other countries. And so my commitment to the work has been, and when Effie started working with the uh, Congress, I became much more involved as a player with it after Effie and Rose Hong and I uh, started the Global Healing Alliance. And that formed kind of a basis for melding together a framework to assist Effie because the Congress came out of the East West Academy of Healing Arts, which is her business. And uh, like she said, a 501c3. And so from that original framework, we started offering a number of things. And at the time, uh, we began to do some parallel work. And Effie joined our faculty at Akamai University. And, um, uh, you know, it was an evolving plan. And actually, to me, it is a spiritually guided plan. Because throughout my entire career, I have always followed spiritual guidance. I was going to be a physicist and heard a voice that I needed to be a nurse. And so I became a nurse. That's a story oh, within itself I won't <laughs> talk about now. But and this is what is really uh, the contribution that I'm working with is to integrate the university activities 
in the scientists that we work for, including a number of our PhD students that we have, and linking it to uh, the Qigong, Tai Chi community, and natural healing. I am totally a believer in natural healing, what a difference it makes. And as of 2021, I became president of the university, which is in the last thing in the world I would ever want to do. But my goal was they needed someone to help with a particular crisis we had at the time. And I went inside and I was guided, okay, I'll do it. And actually, I've been very excited what we've been <laughs> able to do. And it forms a linkage for connecting some of the scientists that we're working with and practitioners and educators and helping them to have a framework. And our accreditation body is with the ASIC that is located in England, in uh, your area. I believe that's where your headquarters is. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's. You know, we recently got our reaccreditation for four years, and I was really very, very busy pulling that off. That was achieved in July of this year. So that layer on top of what we're doing with the Congress mm -hmm. has been a big challenge, but an exciting one. And one of the things we believe in, which, you know, Effie has been a mentor to me, I would say, not so much a here, I'm, I'm paying you a fee to do this for it. It's a mentor in following her vision and her inspiration to uh, gather a community of people and build the community that brings their expertise forward, which is a heart-centered expertise. And uh, that's the way our students and our faculty come together. We had a board meeting on Saturday, and I shared with them all about the Congress where we were and the new opportunities that will come forward in the future. And here we are. So that's my story. <laughs> oh, that seems like an earlier. Thank you so much, Mary Jo. I'm sure there's a lot more stories as well, but I can really sense your excitement here as you're speaking about this and the possibility of what can come through for people watching and listening. And if you are, if you would like to find out more about this, um, this, this Congress that is occurring, hop over to the worldcongressevents.org, but don't go yet because we've still got some fun stuff to, to share with you with uh, Sharon and, um, and Amalia. But I wanted just to bring up that point that you made, uh, Mary Jo, about, um, about how everything's sort of coming together, this inclusivity. And I mean, that's the chi, that's the energy of chi. It, it wants is. to unite. It's part of all of us individually, but as a whole. So it feels to me like this Congress is a natural expression of chi in motion in, yeah. So and we have two specific doctoral programs, one by Dr. Stephen Rosenblatt, who's going to be speaking yeah. about the evolution of uh, Tai Chi, Qigong in Chinese medicine in the United States. And then also Dr. Uh, Corandino and Dr. Uh, Patrick Conte. They're going to be sharing. They We have a new program that's just starting. It's a doctorate in neuroscience acupuncture. It wow. uh, was approved just recently and being launched. And we're right in the middle of uh, pulling together some very exciting research projects. Mm -hmm. So uh, the framework exists there to pull together the community, whether you're a practitioner, you're a, a client or an educator or a researcher. It's a framework, the Congress is a framework for bringing people together to experience new things that are hot on the frontier of what's going on, both in science and in practice and education. I love that, hot on the frontier. And here we are, hot on the frontier of Chi with these four beautiful women. And I would also love to just mention this connection we have about being nurses as well. And I don't know about you watching or listening, but have you found that nursing's been part of your of your life somewhere that you found you've been called to help heal members of your family? Because I really feel that this is what we have within us, that in 
not only to innately to be able to heal others but heal ourselves sorry but to when we hold others in that healing frequency we encourage them also to drop into that self-healing so this is a a massive topic and i know that the congress i don't even know how many people are involved in this congress i kind of lost count as i was going through the itinerary but it, it does feel immense and also like how much production has gone on in the background so Thank you so much, Mary Jo. I will look forward to talking to you again in the future in a little bit more depth. But let's pass over to Sharon and Amalia. So hello to you, my love. So we've got Sharon Rose here, who's the president of Sacred Mysteries Production. She's a filmmaker, author, composer, a master teacher and performer in world music and dance. She's the producer, director of the groundbreaking documentary series, Quantum Chi. <laughs> I have to do that because I absolutely love this, as well as many, many other documentaries. Um, and with her alongside her here is Reverend Dr. Amalia Weichingli, the founder of Infinity Quantum Qigong and Transcend Dance, descended from a lineage of healer. Healers Dr. Weiching is a multidimensional healer, holistic health counselor, bodywork therapist, and associate producer for that. Da -da 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 quantum chi so let's get you on my loves let's get you on and ask you how did you get involved with this congress i was working on the quantum chi documentary series and i met dr Epi chow i was so impressed with her vision with all that she had done for the world of healing qigong traditional Chinese medicine, et cetera. I personally experienced a healing from her. And so it was clear to me, I, I have studied the uh, different healing modalities, Feldenkrais, uh, craniosacral therapy, and the whole Qigong experience. Also yoga, because I lived in India for quite a while. And the whole experience of Qigong, what it brings, the self-healing aspects of it were impressed me so much. Not only that, but every teacher I met was so giving, was were so graceful, were so much full of love and wisdom mm -hmm. that I decided to spend a number of years now working on this series to help bring the, this knowledge to, to the world. And the Quantum Chi series, now there's uh, two episodes finished. We want to do one more specifically on healing. And so we've been working on this to bring it out to the world, especially now it's so important since we've been through this pandemic and people are really looking for ways to heal themselves. And Qigong really, brings this forth. So Effie, Dr. Chow, uh, let's see, about three years ago, <laughs> they awarded me with the Filmmaker of the Year for the Quantum Chi series. And that's when I became involved in the Congress. This year, uh, we, we've taken five hours of the Congress to bring forth these teachers in these different panels, the people who have been part of Quantum Chi. Yes, so we have panels on uh, Wei Chi and the art of energetic protection, uh, Qigong and the quantum field, nature and the Tao, and integrative healing in which we brought in uh, not only uh, Qigong and TCM practitioners, but we brought in Ayurvedic practitioners from the UK mm -hmm. and also naturopaths. And so we're really bringing forth Epi's vision of integrative healing. And that's what we need in this world. And that's why I've become part of this Congress to help bring forth Epi's vision which is so close to my own. Bless you. Yes, yes to all of that. 
Great, all of that. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon, for all that you're doing. I know that you're doing a lot of editing in the background as well to make sure all this flows seamlessly for people when they're going to be watching. Well, as a filmmaker and having years in the uh, culture of, of India and the beauty of the art in many traditions around the world, I want when I produce something, I want it to be beautiful graceful and full of knowledge that's useful for humanity thank you and you are you're doing a sterling job and that anybody that um would like to hear sharon talk a little bit more about the, the quantum chi film then sh she has done some interviews for chi time so we're going to be putting you in touch with them um, a couple of specific ones there so look out for that um, so thank you so much, Sharon. I could talk to you for so much longer and I know we will again in the future, but let's pass over to, I'm going to have to, Dr. Wai Ching Li or Amalia as we know you to be. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. I first met you through Quantum Chi as well. And then when we um, did a viewing of Quantum Chi over here in Glastonbury, you actually came over and were there to be able to present it. And it all felt like something very real and tangible was starting to manifest. And then literally two months later, we went into lockdown. So we're picking up the threads now, aren't we? And here we are. I love what you were saying, Sharon, about how the Congress is very linked to the vision of quantum chi. This is integrative stuff going on. And I feel that with you also, Am Amalia, that you've had this integrative approach to everything that you do. So how did you get involved with the Congress and um, what would you like to share with us about that? Well, I realized that listening to everybody, you know, just feeling the beauty of our journeys together, including with you, beloved Clara, you know, teaching in Glastonbury and you hosting the, the teachings as well as the transmissions that were coming through in Glastonbury, right? And the tour, and we were doing the work with the ley lines and the earth and the planet. And, you know, what is so beautiful is that uh, encapsulated in our convergence of souls today and also the Congress is that translation of the esoteric arts right, and the mysticism and the, the beauty and mystery of medicine, I'd say, you know, of Qigong, let's say, you know, energy medicine into the integrative medicine, into the allopathic world. And we, are, we all have this path here. Uh, likewise with me coming from a lineage of uh, healers on paternal and maternal sides. And my great grandfather was the Chinese physician to the Sultan of Selangor in Malaysia. And also my mom and the aunties were all incredible, uh, shall we say shamanic um, healers. <laughs> so uh, I have uh, the, really the beautiful privilege of having that coursing through my bloodline and makes it very much easier for me to trans transition from one to the other, which is actually the work that I'm doing now. And especially in the Congress, um, I think many know that uh, I'm, I'm the bridge. Um, uh, for many organizations and at the Congress, I'm actually able to serve as a teacher, but also as a bridge to other medical organizations and helping with the outreach, yeah. which we're all doing in the world, but just really downloading into the ma new matrix of uh, medicine, which is what's needed right now. And it's a beautiful, beautiful weaving, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, the three of you being registered nurses. And I wanted to be a surgeon actually. And I had a little, <laughs> and now I'm just doing psychic surgery. Oh, and wow. and um, just very happy to be, you know, invited in as a coach and to the Congress. And I realized also in 1990, when I was living in San Francisco, Dr. Effie Chow's name kept coming up in my consciousness and people were saying that we should meet. And many years later, we did meet and uh, actually through Quantum Chi also. And then see, it's all bringing us together. And then Sharon and I met because of the quantum field. She, she was uh, um, searching in the, the uh, website, you know, and I was the only one who came up with the term quantum, which in 1990, I was told by the Council of Light to say quantum. Yeah. And at that time, I did not understand what quantum, and I was actually resistant to calling infinity quantum qigong, but they said, you will understand. And I started having visions of the yin yang and the 
by um, hexagrams as binary codes of our codes as human mm -hmm. beings. Mm -hmm. So that brought me to the study of quantum physics in quantum theory and translating uh, the ancient wisdom into modern science. And that's a beautiful journey. Oh, thank you so, so much. This is a, a very rich conversation that feels like it wants to evolve uh, into something more when we get this amount of energy here of so much wisdom and, and, and deep compassion also for the human condition, but also this the multidimensional aspects of being that are here for us to tune in with and to harmonize into our physicalness while we're here on the planet. And I think this um, this weaving between the uh, the different forms of the, the healing modalities is absolutely key at this time. So thank you so much for bringing the Congress through, so should I say officially the 22nd Congress, the world, so, should I start that again? Officially the 22nd World Congress on Tai Chi, Qigong, traditional Chinese medicine and natural healing is coming up really soon it's the 24th of september it's going to be four days you can find out more about it on worldcongressevents.org if you're just on the home page there you scroll to the bottom you'll be able to download the whole itinerary there and it's just i i'm going to be glued to my screen or should i say my little earbud because i don't want to miss any of this i think what is being curated and produced here is of the highest quality and i know that you're going to gain something that's just right for you another bit of the jigsaw will, will drop in and if you haven't got time to watch it all at the time then you can get access to it you can find it out all about it on that website as to how you can get access for it moving forward but anyway let's all come back on the screen together again wave again thank you all so so much for being here to talk about this amazing congress and vision of um dame dr effie chow and to each and every one of you mary joe and amelia and sharon thank you so much i look forward to the next time we all speak so take care keep your chi up my friends your energy is important